Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Independent Street NOLA and Seasons and Ritual, and I am here with my good friend Helen, the Crimson Cadaverous. Hello. I and as you can see, above me. My yes, head's her head on fire. Don't worry. It's the magic. It's the magic of technology. Yes. And as you can see, we are um, on Zoom today because it is Mardi Gras, and we are stuck. Is that the right word to say? Stuck in our respective homes. Yeah, you're kind of stuck in a box right now. That's what they call it for friends. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to bring you uh, this weekly celestial update um, just from other on two different sides of New Orleans. Yes. Okay, so we start, we start off Monday. It's a big, this big way to start off the week, which is funny because most people have the day off because it's President's Day. Oh, it's President's Day, too? Because I'm just thinking of it being Monday Gras. Well, sure, because that's what we do. Sure. Okay, so it's like a, it's all, another holiday. Okay. Yeah. So, so a lot of people, lot of people have, have a, a day off. Interesting. Yes. So they have a four-day weekend. Yes, that makes sense. And it's interesting because you're right, it starts off, like, literally the beginning of the week. I think it's at 1.06 a.m. So, like, as soon as we go over into Monday we get this Pisces new moon to start right. the week off right. Um, and it's a super new moon. Yes. Which, which is funny. It's close to the earth. Even right. Which is here. I was going to always say, I always think it's funny when we call it super, when it's right. dark a moon, new moon. moon. Yeah. It's funny. Um, and so it is in Pisces. It is, we're, we'll, we're filming this on the 19th, on Sunday on the 19th. Yes. So we we're just started Pisces. Yeah. We just started Pisces season, and so tonight slash this morning, or this coming morning on Monday, like you said, at 1 a.m., we're going to have the super new moon. Yes. Um, In Pisces. Yes. And this is a huge energy, you guys. I'm going to do a video on it tomorrow, and then, Helen, are you going to write on it? Yeah, I'll write about it in the morning. Okay. I kind of want to let, like, the dream world kind of sit, uh, sit in with that one, because Pisces is definitely of the dream world, and... It's basically going to be happening when I assume most of us are going to be asleep. So I think that's that's kind of perfect timing. Oh, which, by the way, you were in my dream last night. Oh, I you hope were I was having some fun. It, it was. You were helping me. You, you were getting, you, you, you handed me a light or something so I could see. Oh, that sounds like me. Yes. And also, though, like the theme about the dream, which, you know, I can't 100% remember, it was about the moons. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, I know. So we thank talk you. about that a lot. So it makes sense. Yes. Yay. Okay, guys. So we're back. Okay. So moon and Pisces, moon Pisces season, new moon and Pisces. It will be sextiling the North Node. Yep. And Uranus. Right. Who are both still? And so who are both still in Taurus? Right. Um, sextiling is how many degrees apart? Sixty. So, so like that's two, a lot of good energy. Two sides. Yep. Yep. And it's interesting because we've been dealing with a lot of like ending energy recently and beginning mm -hmm. and this new moon is kind of like the peak of that because mm -hmm. we've got the pisces new moon which obviously pisces is the last zodiac sign so the end but a new moon is beginning mm -hmm. but then we also have the same day venus entering aries so leaving the last zodiac sign pisces mm -hmm. and then entering aries the first zodiac sign so we've got all this, like, we've already had, like, a bunch of ending, beginning energy, but this particular new moon is, like, ending, beginning, ending, beginning, ending, beginning. Which is Pisces at its highest. Exactly. It's like those two fishes looking both ways, mm -hmm. and to me, that's perfect, and it's a great way to start Pisces season to have this, like, Pisces new moon to start it off with. I know, and I really feel like we're in just in a different time and era, which I know you and I both know this, and I'm obviously the people that listen to us both know this too, but like, I have to tell you, this is probably the first Pisces season that I've actually looked forward to. Oh yeah. I actually been looking forward to it a lot. And you know, I, I was anyways, but then once I saw that Venus was entering Aries on the same day, I was like, Oh, that's perfect because Venus loves Pisces. Right. But like also Venus likes to get moving too, which is like perfect in Aries. And I'm like, this is like to move out of like a sign she really, really likes. And then like this initiating energy with the new move at the same time. I'm like, that's perfect. So you guys, it's really important to set these intentions. 
Yes. And just know you got time to do it. And if you miss this and you can always come back, the energy is still there. Mm -hmm. So, um, and like I said, I'll do a video tomorrow and Miss Helen will write about it tomorrow as well. Yes. So on Tuesday, we will still have the moon in Pisces. Mm -hmm. It'll be squaring Mars, who's still in Gemini. Yes. Now that's actually after the moon moves into Aries later on. Oh, wait, the, it'll be squaring Mars and Gemini after it moves oh, wait, into no, Aries? No, 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 I'm sorry. I okay. don't know what I'm talking about. Excuse me, square, square It's Mars. Mardi Gras. We've got Mardi Gras brain. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Excuse me. So yes, you're right. Moon in Pisces, square Mars, conjunct Neptune, sextile Pluto, all before moving into Aries. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which is funny when Helen says not really because she writes the notes. So. <laughs> right. Okay. And we're like, shit, I'm reading your notes. Okay. So the moon and the moon is still sitting in Pisces and it'll be squaring Mars and Gemini. Yes. And so again, when, when planets square each other, looking at each other eye to eye, mm -hmm. um, and which is interesting because as you just said, Venus just moved into Aries Yes, and Aries is ruled by Mars. Yes. So this is going to have a really good conversation, mm -hmm. um, with Mars because Mars is like, um, Aries ruler. So if Venus was like, I got all this. Okay um this conversation is going to be i believe that you do but let's make sure we're bringing in a higher conversation that's how i see that Pisces yeah staring. i definitely see that too and i think you know this whole like kind of you know balancing act that like venus and mars have been doing for months and months it seems like now um i think they're almost like this is the perfect energy for them to come into like you said the pisces energy because it's going to it's like mellowing everything out. So whatever like tension or whatever might have been between those two energies, mm -hmm. it all just gets mellowed out in the waters of Pisces. It's and it's funny too because I feel like in the olden days when Venus entered Aries, um, there might have been a lot of uh, energy about what I'm going to tell you, what I think about you and your whole family. Yeah, and I feel like now we are able to just think of either different words or not say that or just know that we can just move on without saying that that's how I see that square that <laughs> square yeah definitely. because it is like that higher self Pisces is that higher self and if you can let go of that lower self that would tell somebody those words yeah it's ending that old energy and moving into that new energy yeah and on the same day Pisces I mean, the moon and Pisces will conjunct Neptune yes so how do you read that? That's just a lot of really dreamy energy. Yeah. Um, it's basically just this Pisces Neptune energy, like amplified, like more and more because the moon in Pisces, is, it's definitely, you know, a comfortable energy too. So mm -hmm. whatever intangibilities we've kind of been dealing with recently, I think we're going to be able to kind of swim through them with ease mm -hmm. because this is going to feel like comfortable territory that we're in. I agree. And also it is still reminding you guys, it's okay to keep dreaming. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you put all those on hold from all the bullshit we've gone through, but it's okay to start bringing that back in. Right. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned like, uh, kind of like thinking about things differently because we've got the Mercury square Uranus happening on the same day, which I feel like, you know, Mercury is our mind and communication and Uranus is kind of like the higher octave of our mind. And definitely also wants us to do things differently. I think we are kind of changing our narratives, mm -hmm. like continuing to change the narrative of like what we tell ourselves, how we show up in the world, you know. Yeah. And that definitely seems very obvious with that. I agree. That's that's a really good way to to frame that as well. Um, and also that Moon and Pisces will sextile Pluto, who's still hanging out that last degree of Capricorn. Yep. Um, Transmitting things easily, mm -hmm. letting things go. Right. Realizing you can work differently. Yes, definitely. There's a lot of like realizing, thinking, working, doing differently Yeah. On with the energy of that day. And then at the end of the day, um, the moon will move into Aries. Yes. Which actually sets the scene for something really interesting because we have so many different planetary bodies in Aries already. Mm -hmm. The next few days, the moon just kind of goes along meeting up with all of them. Which is kind of funny because with us, that will be Fat Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Like from Tuesday going into uh, Wednesday. Yeah. 
and then uh-huh. which will be then Ash Wednesday for Catholics, um, yeah. which is when we start to, which is when we kick off the Lenten season. Yeah. Yeah. Which leads us to Easter, but you know, and spring and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. on Wednesday, the moon, well, the end of Tuesday, the moon moves into Aries. Yeah. And then Wednesday, moon is in Aries. And it's, and let's, all right, let's just go over a list who's already in Aries. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Venus, she just moved Dark in there. Yep. Yeah. Vesta. Yeah. And Chiron. Yep. Yeah. They're all, already there. Already in Aries. And once the moon starts moving through there, starts meeting up on that day with all four of those planetary bodies. That's party. Yes, it's quite the party. And I mean, it's already, again, we talked about having like beginning energy, like initiating energy. You can't really get more initiatory than Aries energy. That's what Aries is all about. It's starting things, something new, you know, moving forward. And, you know, we've got this really interesting energy on that day with all these conjunctions, because that's a lot of different energies. Venus is kind of like our value system. Jupiter is our beliefs, which kind of goes together, but kind of doesn't. Um, Vesta is our eternal flame. Chiron is how we heal. And so, like, all these things are kind of coming together with the moon, right. which is like our inner self, our heart, our feelings. Our intuition. So, Right. I think it's almost like we get to start anew Mm -hmm. in these areas Mm -hmm. and like something like maybe feeling differently about them, looking at them differently, um, something like that. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like, too, because that Aries is that initiation. And I feel like because that Chiron, to me, that's who's jumping out the most. So I really do think it's a healing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, It really is that we are able to trust, like you said, ourselves. We can our faith. And, yeah. and, and in faith and you know vesta our eternal flame so right. she's the one that keeps us going you know if we have that i always think of her as like kind of like the pilot light you know you may not always have the the uh burner turned on but you have the pilot light going so that when you need to turn it up you can sister your pilot light's totally turned on i can see it behind you it looks great. <laughs> right. um, um and then before we move yeah. on i just Oh, I just want to say real quick, because Chiron, if we remember his original story before he was shot in the ass, was that he was a master healer. Yes. And, and we so always forget he, that about him because everybody's like, oh, he's the wounded one. Right. Like, that's just one part of his story. Right. And so I think that's coming in there. You know, like we have a thousand stories. We have tons of stories. It just doesn't mean we have to stick to one narrative. And right this idea too that Chiron he he would like people would go to him because he knew how to heal them and so I feel like we're tapping back into like oh actually I know how to heal those old stories yeah and then show up um well it may also not just so much like heal ourselves but see things as something that were almost like more like a gift as opposed to something that like hurt us we had to heal it be like this happened to move us forward so I think that with Chiron is you know, again, everybody focuses on the, like, he's the wounded, wounded healer. And it's right. like, no, he's a great healer. He was able to heal so many different things. And like, obviously the irony is he couldn't heal himself, but like. He healed himself he, enough not to die. Right. It's like, it's almost like he's more than his wound. Right. And we're supposed to remember we're more than our wounds too. That's perfect. Because on that same day, Mercury in Aquarius is trining Mars and Gemini. Yes. So, so that is that talk like you were talking about earlier um when it was squaring a couple mm-hmm. days ago it was squaring but now mercury is trining yes and so to me that is bringing in that conversation because mars is going to move that stuff and that moon in aries is a really good balance between a lot of divine feminine and masculine energy yeah it's almost like we have the power also to to tell the stories that are right for us you right. know because of trying where it's like you know, we recognize that, like, we control our own narratives. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, Thursday, the moon is still in Aries. Yes, and we have some made it to Thursday. Up. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and it, it will be sextiling Mercury, who's still in Aquarius. Mm-hmm. It'll be sextiling Mars, who's still in Gemini. So, again, yeah, right. still a lot of talking. It's like- getting in the middle of that trying that happened the day before right so 
the day before, like you said, it's trining and now it's sextiling because it's getting yep. closer, correct? Yep. It's moving. Yep. Okay. And then on that same day, it'll be conjunct, which means real close, um, Juno yeah. and Eris, which is so, it's so amazing to me, but I probably won't go on it too long, but Juno is Hera slash Hera. Yeah. And then Eris is our sweet um, discord. Yes. And it's interesting because I think in an old school astrological way, somebody would look at this and go, oh no, you're going to have like a disruption of your partnerships or something like that. Yeah. And I feel like that's like so not the energy that I would read now because we were talking about like new narratives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I see this as like a really positive thing because Eris may be a disruptress, you know, she's always disrupting things, but she only disrupts what needs to be disrupted so it's like she's almost like helping you out taking things out that like don't need to be there and that's really interesting you say that because that was the energy that I was getting for this entire week that was that's coming up and and I was kept trying to figure out like the best way to frame it and the reality yeah. of it is this like you said like a, in an old way we'd be like oh no it's going to disrupt our relationships right um, oh no this horrible relationship i'm in is gonna go away oh no you right know? and that's the whole thing the, the, what's coming up you guys to me this is how i'm reading it um is that if these things come up or it's just not fixable then it's just not fixable yeah. and nine times out of ten you already know this and nine yeah. times out of ten you've just been dancing around it and tr and like and we're to the point now that duct tape and what is that flex seal and all that stuff just isn't going to work anymore. No. And it's almost like you got to ask yourself, why are you even trying to do that? Right. And, and I think that might be something that kind of comes up again, Juno, you know, with partnerships. And I don't necessarily mean like, you know, I think everybody's going to break up with their partner or something. No, like no I know. Maybe more like just the part, the way we partner with the rest of the world might have to be disrupted. It might have to shift for us to like see something different. And I don't, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing. I think it's almost going to be like a welcoming where it's like, all right, now I don't have to do that anymore. Cool. And I was going to say too, like you just, you hit on something too. It was like, maybe we, we, we break up with our old self. Yeah. Like the discord like comes happens. in that we don't, yeah. we, basically that's it. I won't keep, but basically you break up with our old self. Like it's okay. Yeah. I definitely see that. Yeah. And I think, again, it's it's going to be a welcome thing. Yes. Yeah. So just know that, you guys. Just We can frame things, keep things moving, even if it we like, eh. Um, but I think it's going to be good. Okay. So Friday the 24th, the moon is still in Aries. Yes. <laughs> okay. It will be sextiling. I know. <laughs> It'll be sextiling Saturn who yep. is in the, at the end of Aquarius yes right and so you've got to, if we if you've been following along this long story that we've been playing out for the week um, a lot of things are moving and shifting and now um, everyone's hanging out in Aries having a good time yeah the moon is moving through Aries and it's and it's talking to Saturn who's an Aquarius right like okay how do we start making this uh tangible or um what How do we curious about things? Yeah. 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 Um, and then it will also be squaring Pluto, who is in the end of Capricorn. Which he's gonna ask us to get rid of whatever's keeping things from happening the way we need to have it. Like okay. he's definitely gonna ask that. You know, and that's what Pluto does. He he asks us to, you know, get rid of things, but Transition. he does it for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like his sister Eris, you know, yeah. they're both always like, if it's, it's, it's gotta go, it's gotta go for a reason. Right. Um, and so then, and then finally the moon will move into air, the moon will move out of Aries into Taurus. Yeah. Okay. And then and we have another conjunction this time with the North node. Right. And the North node is what we're striving for you guys. Those are the lunar yeah. North nodes are the nodes, the lunar North node. So it is what we are striving for. Yep. So, so with the moon merging energies with the north node, it's like we feel one with our the correct direction, you know, the, the way that we need to be moving. Which is good because there is this, I mean, this week can be, I, I mean, it looks like it could be bumpy, not in yeah. a bad way, but it could be bumpy. And so when that moon moves into Taurus, um, you know, Taurus is a fixed sign. Yeah. So we can, it's, we're going to start grounding this 
<laughs> shit in was what I was going to say, but we can start <laughs> grounding in this energy and saying oh, yeah. that we are moving to our highest goal. Yeah, exactly. And with the sextile with the sun around the same time, I think that definitely solidifies that energy because like we're feeling at one with the direction we're moving in and we're feeling at one with ourselves. We mm -hmm. feel like we're flowing with our authenticity. Yeah. And we're just going to have to know with that sextile with the sun who's in Pisces now. Pisces at its highest self is beginning and endings like that, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think we, we're going to have a lot of lines drawn in the sand, yep. but again, in a good way, you know, yeah. it's going to be, like, this is just where I was. This is where I'm at now and moving forward. Right. And also if it's like, if we're talking about Pisces bringing in those dreams, it's sort of like, we're getting this energy of like, I mean, not to be dramatic, but kind of like now or never. Yes. Like got and to it's go bring that up because we've got the square with Lilith. Sweet, sweet Lilith. Like, oh yeah. And I think, you know, again, deeply misunderstood, of course, but she's, she's our inner bitch and yeah. in a good way. Like I really say that in a loving way that she's like the one that keeps us from ever letting anything bad happen to us and doesn't worry about being polite when she's doing it. She's just like, nope, you know, if this isn't mm -hmm. right for you, I'm going to not let it happen. Yeah. And I feel like she kind of like fights for us on that day. Mm -hmm. Or like kind of forces us to fight for ourselves. So we're like, no, I got to fight for what's true to me, what my true path is, not what somebody's telling me, not what I think I'm supposed to do. Right. And which is interesting because before, before when we were in that age of Pisces, I feel like when we try to stick up for ourselves or um, say, this is what I've got to do, we were either then gaslit yep. or we were distracted or then something happened. So we couldn't move right. forward, like what we want to do. And now that we're out of that, when it comes back up, we're just going to be like, no, this is, these are the facts and this is what I want. Yeah. yeah. And I think again, you know, the square almost like, again, sometimes we think of that as like challenging tension, but I think it's a tension in a good way. That's going to say to us, like, we have to stand up for ourselves. Yeah. We have to do what's right for us. Because she's not worried about that. Other right. Because notions of things. Yes. Um, Cause she's in Leo. Mm -hmm. Leo is our confidence. So yeah we need to have that confidence we need to have confidence like yeah we're doing this <laughs> right exactly and she's I think if there's any kind of challenges presented on that day it's going to be for her to like kind of remind us that we really can fight for that for ourselves mm -hmm. I agree okay we're moving to Saturday yep okay Saturday the moon will still be in Taurus yeah um, so that means it will be conjunct Uranus because Uranus yes. is still still in Taurus. <laughs> yes. And this conjunction, you know, it's interesting because for a while we had the North Node and Uranus very close to one another. They're starting to move further apart. So when we start to see things, you know, with the two, the North Node and Uranus, we start seeing them on different days now. So yes. it used to be like all of the same day. So that energy is kind of moving apart, which... I, I like to mention that because we have been kind of sitting in it for a while. Yeah. But with the moon being conjunct Uranus on this day again in Taurus, you know, as it's been, uh, I almost feel like there's something about like a new direction that we're moving in that we're locking in on that day that we're starting to feel like comfortable with where it's like, yes, this new direction is where I'm supposed to be going. It feels right for me. Locking it in, you know, with that fixed Taurus energy. Yes. And I also think too, like, because it's the moon, we're going to start listening. We're going to start noticing that our intuition or that voice in our head is, is start starting that new narrative. It's yeah. going to sound different. It's going to yep. start saying how we're putting ourselves first mm -hmm. and how we can make that happen. And you know, that same day square Mercury supports that because that's again, like saying, almost like challenging you to make sure how you're speaking about yourself is the way you should be speaking about yourself. The narratives yep. you're telling you, are these the right narratives? You know, we might have to like kind of sit with ourselves and go, you know what? I haven't been, you know, telling my story right. I need right. to change it. Okay, we're changing it now, right? And also noticing like, no, wait, no, I'm, I'm going to put myself first. Yes, exactly. And sextile with Neptune is like, you know, we... We can do that. We can connect with that intuition. We have yeah. that ability to. We just have to like kind of believe in ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Then we move into Sunday. Mm -hmm. The moon will still be in Taurus. Yeah. And it's trining that Pluto and Capricorn. 
Yes. And so, um, the trine again, energy is 120? Yeah, 124 signs away. So that is good energy, which I think plays on what you just said, is that believing in ourselves. Yes. Continuing to believe in ourselves and like easily getting rid of anything or any like narrative that doesn't allow that, that doesn't, you know, that kind of clouds that where we know we need to be. Yep. And then it, the moon and Taurus will then also be squaring Saturn. Yes. So again, getting serious about things. You know, yeah. If it's not, if it's not for you, if it's not supporting, you know, the foundation you're trying to build, if, you know, something is causing too much of a restriction on you, you know, whatever it is, somebody's like encroaching upon your boundaries, any of that, we're going to be challenged to let that go on that day. Yeah, because you guys, Aquarius, again, is a lot of things. But one of the main things Aquarius is, is freedom. Yes. And so, and, and we need to start seeing how there's freedom and stability. Yeah, exactly. And, so, and how, what are the things that are keeping us from that place of freedom where we're stable? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And then later that day, the moon will move into Sweet Sweet Gemini. Yep. And that's just kind of how we start the next week, which is great because that's like a fun, curious energy to start off with. Yeah. And so I feel like, I mean, at the beginning of the week, we start setting all these intentions and basically the rest of the week, make sure we start moving those through. I mean, I feel like the energy is moving so fast that when we set these intentions, it's like, okay, let's go. And things yeah. are start rumbling and moving. Yeah. We're definitely going to want to set some really solid, decent intentions over the next 24 hours or so and hit the ground running with them because we've got a really interesting energy to work with all week with all these conjunctions and stuff I think that's really cool I do too I do too and you guys it's always um important to know like this is fluid energy is fluid if you set some intentions and you're like this isn't really exactly how I thought you can always change you know you can always switch that's why you know, planets and, and things are here to help us. Okay. Not box us in. So, um, yeah. and of course, if you need help, like figuring out intentions or you feel stuck, that's where Helen and I come in. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and it's, you're right. It's energy to work with, not work against. Right. I think that's important to remember that we're not trying to like battle through whatever craziness we think is going on in the skies. That's no, this is energy to work with. Right. So if you need some help with that, you can always reach out to me and or Sweet Helen. Um, you can reach out to her via Instagram um, and, or the YouTube channel for sure. And then same with me, my Instagram or YouTube as well or website. So I hope you guys have a really great week. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, my cat just, my cat knew. It was, Mm -hmm. it's time to go okay you guys um <laughs> have a good weekend have a good week i don't know what day it is um thank you helen for doing this um, yeah. yeah yes um and we'll see you guys next week no oh, oh happy super moon happy pisces season happy, happy pisces season all right bye everybody bye